and uh, I'm very much happy that JIT Library have initiated such kind of program. Uh, this is uh, this this need to be a kind of pilot uh, workshop uh, throughout Delhi University and Delhi region that every library should take such kind of initiative. And I must uh, thanks uh, Mr. Raj B. Singh for, for this such kind of program. Coming to the technology and the library, very interesting thing that uh, let me share a one enough anecdote, then I will start the program. Some student, one teacher came into the classroom and asked student to do some homework. And the teacher has written down the question in the board and he went. One student, there is some confusion in the question. She went to the teacher's room and she found that 20 years old question paper laying on the table of the teacher and the same question has been given by the teacher to the student. She came back in the very next day, she asked the teacher, Sir, you have given us 20 years old question. Then teacher said, yes, I did that. And why I have given 20 years of question is that the basic question of a subject is always the same. You have to answer in different way. The library was in Takshila and Nalanda. Probably one should know that we have a Takshila and Nalanda and, and uh, there was also library and they, they served well to this nation. And in this era, we are also serving to this nation. But their opportunities and their service was a little different from today's service. But the basic goal was how we can satisfy our user. That is the ultimate motto of probably every librarian in this planet. So Radbir Ji giving me a topic. NFC and RFID interoperability. Two days I am I'm in the process of creating many things with that. Uh, yesterday I find some new concept I would like to share with you today. And this, this is some kind of RFID you know better than me. NFC is a little different. We use it by but we do not have an actual uh, application in library science because we have not applied thoroughly in Indian subcontinent. So let's start from the beginning. Library required one system, means software. That is basically we call library automation software. When we using a library automation software, we are choosing either closed operating system, closed accessed or open accessed. In closed accessed means when we are purchasing a one software from a vendor, commercial vendor. We do not have any say on that particular software. The way they have designed, we need to do work with their own ideas. Now, in case of open access system, we can customize it according to our need. That's the basic difference. And those who are in those the library who are based in manual, their automation can can be started. When your manual work is perfect, then automation can be implemented. That is the best theory of automation. So here, we go with the barcode, radio frequency identification, near field communication, Bluetooth low energy BLE or IBECON. That's one of the finest technology appeared within this area. This is close access. Here you will see the programmer has no access to the either database 
or in the different application of the library. So it's a captive user interface supplied by the developers. We do not know about many things on the software. Here that is standards RDBMS. If we use standard RDBMS, so we, we have something to do on the DBMS, database management software. Because the, the, the screen we are using, normally it, it is basically called user interface or front end. The back end is always considered to be the database management system. Next, in open source model, the programmer has the access of database and the, and the application oriented. Could be the application in cataloging circulation acquisition. This is the open source model. Then open API model. You, you, you see the published API and database both have accessibility with the programmer. Now here, if you have an open source, open API model, then you have an accessibility of the application, API, and the database three. Why I am talking about that concept? Because when you are thinking of applying the RFID, NFC, or any kind of external devices with the library system, you need to have a one middleware. The work of the middleware is very important because library automation system doesn't understand the technology of middleware, the technology which we are using from outside, right? RFID, NFC, or anything, <coughs> electromagnetic tape, kind of thing. This is our middleware. But the job of the middleware is the middleware, it's, it's a link, the software, and the hardware. It, start, it read the hardware concept and it sent to the library automation system or software, library automation software. So, so you have a liberty. When you, are use, when you are thinking of using RFID, you need to have a one middleware. That middleware will interlink your devices, uh, the external devices, hardware, along with your liberty. That's the basic model. And that is normally build or develop by the those who are giving you the hardware technology, RFID people or any other technology. Now this is the layer, application, application component, this is middleware and this is the network. So this is the basic uh, computing infrastructure of a middleware where we are going to use the middleware. Normally when, when when uh, you are working on the RFID, probably very few time you are going to use your library automation system. Probably you will use 99% of the time the middleware. Now coming to the RFID. RFID you know, everybody have an idea that it's a technology and we can input uh, the book information and the user's information, we can interact, we can circulate the concept, and and uh, this is the way things are things are moving on. Why that was that has came because previously we used to do with the barcode technology. The barcode technology only used for the circulation concept. There was no mechanism for the security of the book. Then we started using the turtle tape, electromagnetic tape. Suppose you are not issuing books, somehow you forgot. So when you are passing through the gate, that will start budge. But now we clap together the barcode and the electromagnetic tape together and it came in the concept of RFID. So this is the RFID system component. This is RFID tag. This is RFID antenna. This is network infrastructure. And this is workstation. This is the way things is moving on. If you go to this particular structure, you will find that that's a tag, tag interfaces. 
This is RFID middleware and this is other system. This is the way, this is a kind of flowchart. This is the way the RFID technology is moving on to the any application. It's not mandatory that it will be in the library. This is smart tag, RFID tag. You will see the, here it's a chip. <coughs> so whenever you are tagging anything, that means you are writing the accession number of the books on that particular chip. And it will retain the same. Probably in thousands of transactions, it will not going to damage. That's the magic of the car. Then there are many tags. This is passive tag and active tag. Normally we are using passive tag because uh, we do not require much distance. We do not require power in the tag. These tags are the active tag normally used for the Boomba or the car vehicle management system. Right. For, for the library management system, passive tag will be the finest thing. This is tag diagram. This is scientific. This is power supply. This is tax modulation, tax demodulation, control logic, and memory cells. This is a tag. RFID tag memory. Normally, we are using here in the library. It's a right once read many times. So you need to you need to tag or you need to write the information once to the tag, and you can read simultaneously many times. That's the magic of the systems. This is reader. Reader. The job of the reader is uh, only to read. Only to read the concept, the tag item, and send it to the system. It will repeat it in a different way. But whatever the software is required. These are the reader examples of the reader of RFID tag. This is reader anatomy. You will see it's almost like looks like a motherboard of a computer. Uh, but it is not so much of complex as usually motherboard is. You will see the power supply and you will see the frequency 13.556 MHz radio frequency. Here 915 MHz radio frequency, network processor. This is the way they have created the, that anatomy. How are they going to communicate each other? Means how tag and the reader, you will see in these examples. This is tag. This is this is receiver, tag receiver or antenna, right? This is basically reader, tag reader. The, this is the interface. This is the way this, this is going to be interface. You write one. Again, you can read many times. So this is one. Stand by standalone thing, and your job, basic job, is the reader. It's read simultaneously all the time. Probably from here, you can see the different frequencies of the RFID. This is lower frequency, HF, UHF, microwave. In library, this is the HF frequency is required. Because UHF, what happened? Suppose a books purchased, taken by the users, and it passing through the tag, tag reader, it will automatically return. If you have a bigger area, so we need to have a shorter area. So we need to have a HF high frequency. This is this is this is it. This is the RFID middleware system. Probably, you just think, these are the library application. This is middleware. And this is the reader. And this is tag. This is the way things is moving one by one. <coughs> and this is a total diagram of <coughs> middleware, tag, and the, and the application software of a RFID system. After that, 
it is looks like little dry. I'm talking about the technology. I'm talking about the the different frequencies. Now we'll see how we are going to apply it. We have applied in this college, and probably in the university we have come up with a four 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 colleges who are allopathy enabled. Sorry, it is not five. Now it is five colleges. Uh, with the RFID number, and I have interfered. I, I, it is forcefully I have interfered in each colleges of the university for their RFID application. Now we are uh, almost finished in Shivaji College, and uh, they are and from the next month they will start operation with the RFID technology. This college. Is uh, year 2012 we have started RFID technology, and well, this is a OPAC. Probably your OPAC is it, it is much smarter than this one. Well, this is the old kind of thing. This is a book written, so any book issued by the student teacher, they if they wanted to return it in the evening or night or any time, 24 into 7, they just drop it there. Automatically it will return. Here is the, uh, that is called um, uh, uh, stop station. Stop station. Here, uh, you can put your card, book, automatically it will be issued by the users, uh, by the library staff. This is, this is automatic circulation machine. One has to put their book, a card and book, issued it, issued. When they wanted to return, put the back, just return, it will automatically return. Sometimes users need to know how many copies along with me, so they can put their card, library card, and just say inquiry, press inquiry, it will automatically tell us the list of the books along with this particular library user. This is security uh, gate, which is important for us. Uh, whenever somebody forget, I'll, I'm not going to tell any hard word, somebody forget to issue the book, it will automatically start sounding, so we can understand. This is a portable RFID reader. The best benefit of that particular RFID reader, uh, you can scan all the books in your library and download into the computer and just match with the existing database. It will tell how many books being lost within that particular year. At the same time, if you want to put, if you want to search any kind of book, you just, just input the accession number of the books and just scan, it will tell where the books is located. So we often use that because you know the student, where they have keeping books, they, they, they normally does forget everything, right? So we need to recover all those books to these devices. So this is one of the finest frame of the library, right? application all those things we have gone through here some kind of sir <laughs> is that the we have, we have done good thing or or not good thing let have a evaluation we'll find that our 76 percent was our about the RFID technology because the first year students problem is they are normally coming from the school so they do not have a broader idea of library and its application right so Average among the student, third year, second year student, much higher than the first year students. You will see the requirement of orientation program. Third year and second year don't require basically. First year required maximum it's orientation it's programs in RFID technology because they do not know. Even, even they do not able to understand the maximum usability of the library. So they required sometimes. Here, Circulation of books preferred by the library users. This is this is yes no, and prompt versus slow. You will find ninety four percent is agree that it is a prompt process. It is not so slow. <laughs> cost effectiveness obviously cost effectiveness. You will, you will see eighty one percent say yes. It is a cost effectiveness, and overall satisfaction you will find that. Probably 81%, which is 82%, 
and satisfy the investing knowledge. And this is the way we, we, we started. And the interesting thing is that while we require kind of survey, we need to evaluate ourselves, kind of a trust action. Or we can realign the things on the, on the basis of, of their requirement. So we need to we need to evaluate. So this is technology, but technology what happened uh, when we have impl 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 implemented that particular technology, the work gone into very speedy mode. Students usually come, they, they used to issue the books and they went out. This is the this is the way things is moving on. They need not to wait for any person. That's the biggest uh, facility of that particular technology. Now, next technology is that RFID, NFC technology. You have seen the RFID technology has the same frequency. At the same time, the NFC technology tags has the same frequencies. What we are thinking of now, RFID has done. What is my job? Is my job is how to reduce the cost of the technology because corporate not going to think of that because they are in a particular business. So we need to initiate some kind of study that how the normally the RFID tag particular one tag cost fifteen rupees or twenty rupees in the user uh, the card probably 25 to 30 rupees. Now, if you go for the NFC technology, probably it will reduce into 3 to 4 rupees for the chip and the card don't require basically. The mobile phone of a student will be the ID card of the library because it will be a NFC number. From 2020 onwards, whatever the mobile phone will coming up, it will come in, come in, come in with the uh, NFC technology and that will be there. Interesting part is that that's the magic of this technology. So, we in RFID you required one standalone computer, the technology, the staff reader station, or the unit. and here you don't require anything, you require only the mobile phone, and that mobile phone will be along with the library <coughs> staff, so or with the student. If they, they are coming, what we are thinking, we have to just go one by one, what we have developed. This is basically a tap up technology, short range communication. You will see those person communication very short, very close, right? So, so you can understand that technology. Suppose if you need to read one NFC card, so you need to tap your tab or mobile phone, right? So that, that's what people call it's a tap technology, right? So, and how it's work, it's the same concept, which is RFID, not uh, RFID tag usually done. The coil, it's again, if you charge, it will flow uh, one electromagnetic power, so it will um, start waving out some frequencies, and that frequency will be measurable. That is the important aspect. <laughs> Here is the tag. This is the tag of the NFC. It's a very small and the strongest argument in favor of NFC is that over from short range wireless communication is that tag are incredibly cheap to make the make to make and maintain. So the cost of suppose you are you are spending twenty rupees each per book in a one library. If it is goes up to three rupees, two rupees, or one rupees per one chip, so the automatically that kind of automation the cost of automation will be reduced. Then the privacy and security, yes, you, you will find everywhere there is a danger. Uh, suppose you have a RFID concept, RFID technology, anybody can tear out the RFID tag. Anyone can scrap the RFID card, ID card. So here also, but at the same time, you need to more secure the API, means it is called basically family application interface. Uh, it should be so secure, so, so one cannot think of uh, gone through the, it is called basically 
breaking the password or kind of thing, right? There is a there is a terminology what what people call it hacking. Nobody can hack that particular application system. Now this is near field communications app can also work. This is the best options. So that means it can use any anywhere. Coming to this. Probably everybody we are using NFC tag, but we forgot where we are using. In Delhi Metro Rail, whatever the the smart card you are purchasing, that is basically an example of the NFC card, NFC smart card, right? It is not RFID. If it is goes RFID, it's a huge cost. They cannot afford it. So better to NFC chain. That's why you what you do normally when you are going out. From the gate, security gate of the Delhi Metro, you just tap on that. No, you cannot keep over here, and it will not going to read it. You need to touch it. So that's why it is NFC. If it is RFID, then you just keep it up to one feet. It will read, but it cannot be possible. That's the magic of this technology. Here we can use that kind of technology. This is this is the NFC usability, and you will see. The 106 to 400, 4 to 4 kbps data can be given as speed, and this is 13.56 megahertz. These are the phones which is NFC enabled. From 2020 onwards, probably each phone will come with the NFC either or I beacon concept. I will, I will show you I beep on how how we can transform this thing into I beep on. So these are the technology. Uh, these are the mobile phone will come. You have uh, thousands of app available for the library applications. Here also Play Store also in Nokia also. So what we have we have done? I will come to this. We have we have taken out this. This is RFID and this is NFC. You will see. You, you just go to go for match. This is one way. Here is two way communications. This is a standard. This is a standard. This is up to one meter. This is up to ten centimeter. And if you see the frequency, it is the same frequency. So where what we are thinking, the existing RFID library can use the NFC application to read their data. How? a uh, threat and dix you understand better than me we have created one applications with the this, this this is for for experiment this is not for the commercial or anything this will know how things is going on here is the applications this is done by our btech student computer science along with me so we have created that software with nfc and in through their mobile phone If you log in, suppose your mobile phone is phone has the that particular application, and at the same times you have a GPS system. When you are entering to the library, your app will be enabled because it's it is along with the your GPS. So when you enter into library, your app will be open, and it can issue your books. self you need not to ask any you just keep take your phone tap your book and go nobody going to stop not the security gate so that's the magic of the system right so this is the way we have created one prototype and it, it is successfully going on there is no problem at all that can be extensively developed that can be extended by the by the other people and The the concept is that, and this concept probably run uh, in the near future because it reduces the cost. Because when you are applied kind of technology into into like library housekeeping, you need not to spend for the computer, you need not to spend for the uh, devices and other things. Your mobile only what we need to do we need to put one thing into the server, and if you have a Wi-Fi system enabled in the library, probably you your library. 
is the most advanced in Wi-Fi technology and everything. So you, you can think of that. This is our ideas. Mm, you can, we need to think because world is going fast. One standalone system cannot be set for the day. Okay, it is there. What will be the next? That is the way human civilization has grown up. Uh, because probably we cannot think of kind of auditorium in 600 BC. Two of the research and development of the field. You will see this is issue of the books and the, it, it also calculates the fine. So everything is coming up into the concept. It is done in PHP. This is the field of the applications in the member, in the book tag, in the circulations. So this is the way things is moving on. But we are thinking in next few years. Suppose you have a mobile phone and you have an application in the mobile phone. And whatever new books arrive in your library, normally what we have we normally do, we take out the book jacket and paste it outside in the library. Right? So these are the books as came new, new arrival of the library. So what we'll do? We'll scan or we'll take out the content part of the book and we'll tap into the NFC and the NFC chip will be pasted with the book jacket outside the library. Whomsoever wanted to do, they can put their phone, mobile phone over there. So all, all content page will come their mobile phone, they can read. Is that their book is relevant with their subject, then they can later on come to the library and can issue that books. Working, we are working on that. At the same time, we are working with the ID come and go one by one. So let, let's have a let's let let's see the concept is the way people are working on together throughout the world. And it doesn't require many huge money, it doesn't require many technologies, it doesn't require many manpower. It's a very concept, but uh, one has to be little focused what they wanted to do basically. So these are the innovative ideas into the libraries. Coming to the another technology is called Bluetooth, low energy. Bluetooth we already experimented. We usually use for the exchange of file into our mobile or we wanted to listen some music with the Bluetooth technology. We normally put the air dot we connect with the Bluetooth technology. That is one use. Now, the same concept, how we can use into the library. This is basically iBacon. What we are thinking of, but uh, I am working on that. And this is the important aspect is that, suppose you have a mobile phone, you are into the library and you have a huge number of rack of the books. So, we will put one iBacon in each rack. When you will be little closer to that rack, if it is your mobile phone app is open, so all the bibliographical detail of the that particular rack will come to your mobile phone. So you can search, okay, this book is also available on this rack. So you, you can take out. This is the way you can th think over that. And, and the, at the same time, you can take all the data for your strong verification also later on. On that particular rack, those were the books. So you can sort it out. So this is the way we are thinking and we got some ideas that some people are using on it in a different way. This is basically iBeacon. Search, find and connect with the iBeacon. iBeacon locates app book search through Bluetooth. Suppose you want to search one book with your mobile phone, we just came into the library, we just tap to that particular book, the whole of the library, the, 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 that particular uh, app will guide you up to the book. Right. This is the way they are working and they have already done. That is the interesting fact of the Bluetooth technology, means iBeacon I technology. And we are working on that. 
So then you have in your mind that how could it be in Indian environment? It is possible when you are thinking of the RFID, we have already done all this concept technology. Uh, by best way, we don't require all this because we have a huge manpower. And but we need to have some kind of technology which really help to the students. Why? They they should not whenever they will use over here that that technology. Wherever they will go, wherever they will go, they will not feel uh, new to them. To, to them, they will be more confident that we have a technology in our college life. Uh, when we did our masters, we had the technology in India. So we need to think in different way. Now these are the technology. Why are we talking about? I, you, you will never, never mind that in 1996 when I usually gone with my biometer for the asking job to everyone as usually the struggle do I, well, I, I, I have that was my part I did also and but that, from that time I used to thought that when I will be a librarian I will just abolish the book issue written concept. It will be automatic. It was a dream in 1996-97 to me. When we are working on the character user interface CDS ISS in India. It takes 20 years of time to implement the RFID technology but the deep dream was there. That day I had dreamed it. We dreamed it and we did it today. So if we today dream it, so we can do it in near future. At least we can tell our newcomers that that technology is there. You can think of it of that. So that is the major impact of the theory in practical, practical application. Librarianship is a completely practical oriented. Whatever theory is talking about, it's need to be applied. So that's the magic of the system. Hope things has done. I'm really thankful to you. And if you have any question, you can discuss. Thank you so much.